Hey, all you bright, bushy people out there. I am Mike. Along with me is my awesome, awesome friend, Steph Felton. Hi. I'm co-host. She isn't co-host. <laughs> I uh, have a This is a brand new uh, series, a podcast series, called Between the Ponds, which we'll discuss American and British shows, depending on topic of the episode uh this is kind of a spin-off who came of... up with the idea <laughs> <laughs> think of it as like a spin-off of our british versus american challenge <sighs> talking about other things of our cultures yep and there's there's one thing that americans and brits do have in common we like our films and we love a bit of good telly Indeed. <laughs> yeah. So, saying that we are in the month of December, this uh, this podcast episode, our pilot episode, happens to be Christmas themed. So yes. we are looking at Christmas television specials. Indeed. Uh, each we were originally going to do one and one, but Steph Felton had two. Include one of her favorites, and we had to make it two each. So we're going to talk about four specials, two in Britain, two in America, and we're going to talk about how we feel in comparison to our specials. Um, but before we get started, I should we should probably explain the format of this podcast. Basically, what happens is is that instead of being the usual like American an American talking about the American programs or whatever, and vice versa with Brit. We thought we switched it up a bit. So basically, me as Brit, I would give Mike something British to watch and Mike would do the same for me. So instead of being all biased and whatever, you know, it's interesting to get some different opinions and to try some new things out. So that's basically the format of this podcast. Indeed. How many times have you said indeed? <laughs> Somebody could count it. So we can do a counter. Because, yeah. By the so, way, make it into a drinking game. Every time Mike says, indeed. <laughs> but yeah, she's right. We're going to do that. Um, so I guess I can discuss about one of them. But which one should I discuss? Should I do the favorite first? Or should I do the other one that we discussed talking about before? Uh, let's go for the favorite. <laughs> You, you're just so cute when you do that because uh, her favorite, my God, is of course she's the fan, the lover of Naughty. She I loves am. so much about Naughty, and uh, one of the episodes, uh, which was a Christmas special, <laughs> season three, episode. Four. 14, which was an extra episode of season three of Noddy's Toyland Adventures, which is? If I remember correctly, the title of the episode was Father Christmas. Noddy and Father Christmas. Ah, uh, so here's the thing about this is interesting because uh, she was telling me, and I had done some extensive research where. Uh, normal episodes are short. They're like 10 minutes long. And this was extended to 30 minutes. So a half hour special, basically. Uh-huh. Um, Father Christmas is coming to Toyland. He is like the king of Toyland. <laughs> so he's coming for a visit. And Naughty really wants to see Santa Claus, you know? And every time he has the chance to, he misses it. But uh, towards the end, he ends up seen Father Christmas, but then there's two other, like, um, dear God, there's like two villains of the episode where they're trying to f not have s Father Christmas go, like, they block, block rows, they, like, throw snowballs, and it just, like, it's, they, they have, like, a element to that as a foil for the characters. Yeah. The two goblins sighing gobbo. God, that's what they were. See, it, I was watching this with Steph, and I was kind of half paying attention to the episode. I, I I thought it was cute for the episode, but it's just like, it's not my cup of tea. 
But she's pretty fun, you know. I mean, the songs are nice because there's a couple of songs at the end that are really nice. Uh, but yeah, it's just um, the shenanigans <laughs> that Naughty gets into, you know, driving around and then have to, <laughs> like, one of the foils trapped that would be like toffee on the ground and they have to. Like, Naughty arrives, and he drives right into it, and he gets stuck in it, and it's like, oh, no! <laughs> and so he... And then he has to, like, clean it up so they don't cross it again, and he's like, it's all sticky, it's like, eh, 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 eh. And then he's, like, going into the trash can, and he goes right in there, gets stuck in there as Fire Christmas comes through. <laughs> so it's just, it's such a bad day for Naughty, he's just trying to do normal things. As he put it in one of the songs, it was a very disappointing day. But actually, it was Bumpy Dog that actually, because he went to put the last bit of toffee into it, and of course, Bumpy Dog, being Bumpy Dog, managed to somehow, I don't know how a dog managed to do it, just to be able to come up, like, give someone such a shock to flip them into a bin. What? <laughs> but also, I should make an interesting point, is that in the first song, that Noddy sings to Father Christmas in the second verse. It's there's a line blamed by Mr. Plod for all those nasty goblins' tricks, even though no one blamed Noddy. No one actually blamed him. Like, even though as a kid, I was like terrified of this episode. Like, this episode really scared me because I misinterpreted it as everyone was blaming Noddy for the tricks. And it's like, why would you blame Noddy? And someone being someone being blamed for someone else's tricks and everything like that apparently that was terrifying to me as a child i don't know <coughs> yeah um the uh the animation on the show in general is actually pretty daunting and very nice to look at of course good old cosgrove hall but other than that it's just it doesn't really stand out to me <coughs> If you were to give this uh, Christmas special a rating, what would it be? What would the, the scale be then? Uh, story, animation, characters. Uh, so of that. We're stealing the format off you. But we still love you. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um... Story, I mean, the story is actually pretty different than most, like, Christmas episodes, so that's kind of original and different, so give that a five. Um, characters, the characters are kind of cool, they're just goofy, and they just a variety of characters out there. It depends on which dub you hear, you, either the original or the... Uh, English, the American dub, because there's one character that you know, there's a big you difference. Know the English dub, the American dub. Oh my god, Noddy's voice does not fit him whatsoever, and it just grates on your ears after a while. And also the fact that they changed the currency in the American dub to cents and dollars and such. No, sixpences. It's sixpences. Damn it. Um, because America's are like, what's a sixpence? Ooh. Well, yeah, because you gotta have to clarify the demographic. Um, so, uh, the characters are fine. That's a solid five. Um, animation, okay. Animation, I mean, the animation is pretty decent. It's not bad. I mean, there's like no... I'm very straightforward. It's like, it, it is a good episode. It's five all across. For me, it's just like, I just... It's a good quality episode, but would I watch it again? Probably not. Mm, fair enough. Okay, so what shall we shall we move on to the American one now? If you want to flip flop, we can definitely do that. Yeah. Okay, so the first one that Mike showed me um, was uh, a Garfield Christmas special. Um, I have to say, out of the two specials he showed me. Um, this one was very interesting. It kind of followed the the format of, of most um, Christmas specials. In this case, it's like you first wake up, 
when you first get introduced to like Garfield having the most perfect Christmas, having John wake him up saying it's Christmas, you know, you can't open presents without on an empty stomach. So here are all your breakfast lasagnas. I will lay them out to it, reaches the tree. And then, you know, Garfield gets there and John presents his Christmas present on a forklift truck. <laughs> what? On a forklift? Uh, so it turns out it's this thing where you sit on Santa's lap and it reads your thoughts and it brings you any gift you want. So then it turns out it's a dream and Garfield's still the grumpy old bastard that he is and stuff. And uh, basically it's the storyline of going to John's family for Christmas. And there are some really interesting songs in this. There are more songs in this than Noddy and Father Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some interesting songs in here um, but I have to say the storyline was pretty good and it's very kind of reminiscent of you know going to see family for Christmas and stuff like that and you know and having all your Christmas traditions like they read Binky saves uh, Binky the clown that saves Christmas even though they're like grown-ups and stuff they still read the book and everything because you know, you have your traditions and stuff. Mm -hmm. You're never too old for those sorts of things. Because, I mean, mum always gets me and my sister an advent calendar every year and she always does us a stocking. You know, <laughs> so it's that kind of thing. Right. You know. Um, but there was one part that, um, I mean, blame Mike, he set me off. <laughs> he set me off on one. Um I wasn't crying massively, but I, I have to admit, I did have a little tear when the grandma was talking about, uh, you know, missing grandpa, because, spoiler alert, grandpa's dead in this, you know. But she was talking about how, <coughs> sorry, you know, how he's, you know, he was a very reserved man and didn't show his feelings much, but Christmas was, like, his most favourite day, and, you know, that's when all the feelings and excitement came out. And I look over and there's little Mike just like crying. I'm like, oh. But then I thought about, you know, when I used to have my grandmothers over for Christmas and they used to come and stay with us. And that was when, like, <laughs> a slight tear or two welled up in my eyes. And I said to Mike, I said, oh, why did that make you all emotional and stuff? He's like, ask me in the podcast. So. Mike, why did that make you all emotional? <laughs> it's not just that part. It's the whole special period. Um, this special actually is based uh, on um, Jim Davis's, the creator of Garfield's family, Indiana, when he goes to Christmas. And so it's kind of like an autobiogra autobiographical, autobiography story featuring Garfield because it's the experiences are the same. But see, for me, it's like... Yeah, we're going to the farm, we're going on Christmas, you know, and, and in childhood, I remember, like, seeing my grandparents, and then my family would be there, and every, like, little thing was true, because in the special, it was like, oh, mom, you make way too much, I, can you pass me the potatoes? What kind of potatoes? We got scallop baked, boiled, and it's like, it's just, like, home, and I'm just, like, in the pie, I'll take pie, and we got uh, apple, banana cream, and it's like, it was like all the kinds of pies, and it's like, oh my god, it's just like, it's just like at home because it's like it's so true. Because at a farm, you know, you, she'll, you know, the mother will make a lot of food, you know, and then we have to say, you know, Grace, you know, before we eat, you know, and Doc Boy was just like saying, Grace, like I don't know, and <laughs> grab a box in the head with a spoon, which is great. Um, and then he, and then he keeps going on and on and on, bop. And bop. <laughs> so, but. But the part with the grandma, because the grandma was like the one that kind of touched me because she was um, reminding me of my grandparents in general. And then I have one grandma left. So I kind of thought that in my head, I was like, and especially with my grandpa just passing away, I just, that moment when she was talking about him was just like reminds me of my own. So I, there's like all kinds of yeah. relatability and connections that I have to the special. And I just felt emotional as I was watching it. I was like, oh my God, it's so true. Yeah. Anybody watching this podcast, love your grandparents, you know. Make sure you remind them that you love them and stuff because if I could have my, my grandmother's back for Christmas, you know, from the dead. If 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 I could get them back from heaven just for like Christmas and everything, that would be fantastic. 
so yeah uh, so basically story is to lighten the tone a bit <laughs> comedy show comedy show <laughs> uh, the story is really good because i think we can all relate to it in some way you know the whole gorging on the christmas dinner i think we've all done that you know hands up here who's gorged on christmas dinner and of course mums always make great christmas dinner like my mum always does a really nice sausage meat stuffing uh which is always something i oh god i look forward to that every year and it's just like mm. and then sausage meat sandwiches oh oh bless you know and that sort of thing and you know you just god i lost my train of thought <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it was a lot of big sandwiches, <laughs> you know. But it's definitely that whole thing where you have your family there, and you know. But actually, what was really sweet was um, there's a moment on Christmas Day when we're all opening up the presents, and um, Garfield finds letters in the, I think it was one of the barns, and basically, I thought it was all I originally thought. I guess I don't know why I was so cynical in my head. I'm not usually that cynical. <laughs> was that um basically i thought it was all the letters that john and his brother had written um to santa claus all those years ago when they were younger and the parents just hid them away but actually it was the love letters that the grandpa had sent the grandma when they were courting mm -hmm. <laughs> sorry i thought i was gonna sneeze <laughs> Oh, you might have to edit this out. So yeah. Um, so yeah, so then it turns out um it's the love letters. And then this one in the corner got a bit emotional again. Mm -hmm. Oh he's such a cute crier. You know, he just occasionally sets me off. It's like, oh buddy. <laughs> So yeah, so that's just, so I definitely think it's like a story that's like really reminiscent of like um you know of like basically a family Christmas and things like that and you know and the songs in it are pretty good, like they're all very much in a rock and roll style, but they are very, very ca well I, I kind of, I thought they were really good. I didn't find them catchy or anything, but they mm -hmm. were pretty good to listen to. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Animation, very much reminiscent um, to the Garfield animation of the TV series. By the way, I have a cold if you haven't ca caught on. <coughs> by my nasally voice. <coughs> so... So yeah, I mean, not really much to report on the animation, although I did think the Christmas tree looked really lovely, you know, and some of that food did look pretty good. Although I got a bit mixed up because I thought John said, oh, today is Christmas Day or something like that. I don't know. It's I've got a cold. My head's, my head's fuzzy. <laughs> so then, it was Christmas Eve. Yeah, yeah. Or Christmas Eve day, or I thought, what? So anyway, so when they had the meal and they trimmed the tree, and I thought, I don't know, you usually trim your tree before Christmas day. <coughs> you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I have to say, um, no, wait, I'll mention that with characters. But, but I have to say, like, the animation was very much reminiscent to the TV show and stuff. <coughs> <coughs> Although Goff was uh, present in his, like, in the opening sequence, that was pretty inventive, like, pretty creative with, um, with the idea of the, you know, this thing you sit on Santa's lap, it reads your mind, mm -hmm. and all these gifts pop out. Mm -hmm. <coughs> So yeah, uh, characters, characters. Now, okay, I need. I want to talk about the grandma. 
<laughs> she is the grandma I aspire to be because there's times where it's like, you know, she is, she's just there and she doesn't care and she just goes for it. <coughs> that kind of thing. And uh, I love when they're singing Christmas carols and you know, Don Boy, whatever his name is, uh, Doc Boy, uh, basically, sounds like a superhero, Doc Boy, da 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 da! <laughs> is it a Smith? Is it a Brown? No, it's Doc Boy! I'm amazed you didn't whip out your Donald Duck there. Hmm. Nah. <laughs> So yeah, um, so basically um, they're doing this whole thing of seeing Christmas cows and then Dog Boy da, 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 um, tries to play a oh, Christmas tree on the piano but it doesn't work out well and then Grandma's like, stand aside, I'll show you how it's done and then she does like this whole rock and roll thing with it and it's like, yeah Yes, Queen, that is the grandma I aspire to be. Like, you know, <laughs> just, you know, crazy grandma and stuff, you know, doesn't give a damn, just goes for it. It's like, yeah, I want to be here. I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's voiced by Pat Carroll. Oh, Ursula. I didn't realise that. Mm hmm. This, this was just two years before Little Mermaid, so yeah. Thought I note that, but yeah, she's uh, she's probably a highlight of the whole Christmas special. It's like, that's what makes the special whole, you know. Yeah. I just want to see, I just want to see a Christmas special with just John's grandma, <gasps> just that for like an hour, like that for thirty minutes. That'd be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I definitely want to be her when I grow up. Um, the other characters like um, John's John, Garfield is Garfield, Odie is Odie. Um, that sort of thing. Although Garfield does kind of break out of his grumpy bastards sort of thing. <laughs> and, and like when Garfield gets the kind of food baby after the meal. That he's, he's fed, it's like, yeah, that's me after Christmas dinner. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, uh, the mum is very much like anyone, like everybody would see their own mum in that character, you know. Mm -hmm. The whole, you know, the, the whole like making enough food for the 5,000, making sure no one goes hungry and that sort of thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Dad, the dad's quite an interesting character because I love I love him. He's very much knows that his kids have grown up and got their own lives and stuff, and yet the kids just revert back to big kids. And he's just like, oh, do we have to do this? It's like, oh, for fuck's sake, you're all grown up and everything. Like, and you've got your own lives. Why are we doing this? Why? <laughs> and yet he just puts up with it, <laughs> you know. Mm hmm. So yeah, so basically, um, my rating for the special story story, I give it a five. I mean, it's it's a good story in some ways, you know. So it's not good or it's not bad. So it's smack bang in the middle. Animation, it's just the usual animation from the TV show. So a four. Um, Characters, okay, it gets extra merit for Grandma, so I'm going to give characters a six, only because Grandma gets the extra merit. Would I rewatch the special? No. Fair enough, fair enough. I, I would like to note that part of the animation is, um, they're, they're usually like, they, they pan out outside and you see the house and then on Christmas morning, you see like the sunrise, and you see how it looks really nice in the background. So, oh, yeah. the backgrounds are really nice to look at in this uh, <laughs> special. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so ah, uh, we're walking <laughs> through the air. We're walking in the air. Walking oh. in the air. Oh. 
some people in Britain who used to take the piss out of um, that young lad. My name is Ali Jones. <laughs> I got all things up, you know. Yeah, so the next one, uh, which as we're thinking about doing this, we just thought, let's talk about the snowman because that is so, such a British spectacle uh -huh. and, uh, and nobody ever talks about it. It's just like, I, that's so, and I was just like watching it again. Um, God damn. It's, it's, like, it's just like the book too. I mean, the oh, book okay. looks just like the special. Um, so, the snowman has no dialogue whatsoever. It's all through musical score, yeah. with just the animation playing against it. Um, actually, I wanted to look up the composer because yeah. the the music in this, I would I'm actually gonna add another category being music because music, I will wait on the music. Um, <laughs> The uh, snowman. Sorry. Fun fact. Uh, many people may notice it has a particular art style. That's because all the colouring uh, done in this special. Most of the time when you do animation, it's all done, you know, it's all pretty much done with cells and inks and paints and stuff. This was all done by pencil. All done by colouring pencils. So very much reminiscent to the... the, the the film that came out, I think, last year of Vincent van Gogh, where it was all done by each frame was a painting, like a proper oil painting and stuff. Very much, I think it was, I think the snowman was very much done the same way, but all done with, with pencils. I was going to correct you on that because I'm just looking it up right now. The film was produced using traditional animation techniques consisting of pastels, crayons, and other coloring tools drawn on pieces of celluloid, which were traced over hand-drawn frames. For continuity purposes, the background art work was painted using the same tools. Ah, oh, okay. So, but still very much they, you know, it's not like your traditional Right, animation. yeah, 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 you don't see that often because it's so stylistic and it's just the way it looks. And it oh, yeah. kind of looks like it's, um little scratchy with uh, the penciling oh, yeah. or the crayons it just looks like it's somebody colored in you know like a like a uh interactive coloring book or something you know but that's what i like about it because it look it the art style has stayed original to the book because mm -hmm. it, it literally looks like the books come to life you know mm -hmm. like someone's waved a magic wand and there it is okay so <laughs> the story of the snowman is just so simple it's just that a young boy, which we later find out his name is James, um, he built a snowman, <laughs> and kind of, kind of, it's kind of like Frosty the Snowman in a way because the snowman comes to life, but this one does not speak. However, so um, yeah, it comes to life, and they he starts showing around the house, you know, just showing the snowman a lot of things like, oh, look at this, look at that, and it's like, oh, shh, my parents are sleeping, shh, my parents are sleeping. And of course they go. It's were on that night, but they <laughs> might like when you look at it. They managed to sleep through a lot of noisy shit. I know. They, they, yeah. It's like because they go outside again and they discover the motorcycle in the backyard and they start like. <laughs> it's like oh my god, his parents are just <laughs> hardcore. And um, then there's the famous bit where the snowman takes his hand and they start flying in the air and walking in the air starts playing in the background the famous song fun fact for people that think that Anna Jones did walking in the air in the original feature it wasn't Anna Jones it was someone else a name I can't remember Michael something give me a second yeah. um because basically, it like the original guy who did it was asked to do the Toys R Us ad because the song was used in a Toys R Us ad afterwards. Uh, but unfortunately, by the time they asked him, his voice had broken because he was a young lad in a choir. And um, so they managed to get Anna Jones, who was another young boy from a choir, uh, who sung the song, who then went on to have a number one hit with it. Um, 
became very famous for it. Mm-hmm. The, and the uh, boy was... The young lad, the young choir boy, Peter Auntie, uh, A-U-T-Y, Auntie, Peter Auntie, um, through St. Peter's Cathedral, um, sang it. Um, and he's not Welsh, mind you people, he's English, so... Yeah, don't let the curled R's mislead you, because I thought that, because I thought, come on, he's got to be Welsh, he's really curling those R's. Like... Maybe. I know, and I was surprised when I looked him because up. Because the like, Welsh he's... really know how to curl their ass. Yeah, they he's... really like to do that. Yeah, he's, he's English. Um... Yeah, but Anna Jones is Welsh. We can um... reassure you of that. Yeah, but Peter was 13 years old when he uh, sang that. And then his balls dropped. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here, yeah. oh, here come my balls now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then, um, so that whole sequence is, like, you see him flying in the air, and you see these, like, like I said, the art, the, the background art just, just <clears> constantly <throat> changes, and it, you see the, the look of, like, England, and the way they fly through, and they end up in the North Pole, and they get to dance with other snowmen, and meet Santa Claus, and then it's a fun little romp, and then they just go fly back home, you know, He's like, oh, there's my home, there's my home, drop me off there. <laughs> they had this fun adventure, and the snowman just sits, stands right there, and uh, it's like, he goes back to bed and wakes up, it's like, and just goes downstairs and then realizes, oh no, the snowman has melted. <laughs> and this one started, like, I started getting a bit chance out, because I was like, oh no, I know what's coming next, and then he started crying, and then of course... I yeah. started crying. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But actually, some people may be wondering why is there such a sad ending to the snowman? Well, a couple of years ago, I think it was five years ago, they did a special uh, to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the snowman called The Snowman and the Snow Dog. Mm -hmm. And I read an article in the Radio Times by, and it was someone interviewing Raymond Briggs, who originally created the snowman and you can see why he killed off the snowman in, at the end of the book he was a miserable sod such a miserable sod because he's like i killed off the snowman in the end because that's life we all live and die and that's life it's like fucking great jesus christ it's like really it's like yeah. this is Children's book, you know. Oh my god. Jesus. It's like, what a miserable bastard. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is a classic early 80s special. Like, this is originally <laughs> to the 30th anniversary sequel oh, so came out in 2012, so that was six years ago to this recording of this podcast. So, yes, it was that long ago. Um, so, okay. Um, right an animation. This animation, my God, if there's more shows that animate like this, this would be amazing. I mean, even for the sequel, they brought the original team back to create the look of it. You know, to do the... The same animation for the sequel, which actually after this, I'm probably gonna look up that and watch it because I'm gonna, oh, you know, it's it, it's so, um, it is great. Like that's a that's like a six actually. I want to up it up because that's that good of animation. Um, the characters, okay. Um, you have James the boy, and he's, you know, he's just like your typical boy, you know, and just like. I'm gonna make a snowman, and, you know, and he's, like, this kid, you know, and then once the snowman comes to life, you know, he's, like, so excited to have a best friend, you know, just to show him everything around the house and goof off with a friend. So, I mean, he's just... <laughs> goof off with a friend? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but, um, not much to it. I mean, and then the snowman comes alive, and you know, he's just this newly born baby. It's like, you know, he wants to discover everything, you know, and see what's going on and likes to, you know, do this and that, you know. Snowman. Little snowman. Um, you know, and he actually can ride a motorcycle, oddly enough. He's like, 
Dang, just gets on that motorcycle and rides around the countryside in the backyard, going through the woods, going. <laughs> um, and then you got like the other other snowman in there, the other <sighs> snowmen and women. There's snow women too. Don't, they don't want to discriminate or anything like that. So there's there's all that, and like Santa Claus or Father Christmas, as you Brits call him, you know, he's there too. I mean, the characters don't say much. It's all about the actions, you know, the, the things they do, you know, and it's in loud actions speak louder than words sometimes. And the way they do things is just really nice. So the characters are just give it a five because it's really decent. It's very simple, very simplistic at most. Wait. Brain's gone dead. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that we actually watched it on YouTube and we watched it with the original opening, mm-hmm. which is some bloke walking in a forest or some field. That was the uh, author. Oh, yeah, Ray, the author. Ray Bergs. Raymond yeah. Bergs. Raymond Briggs, I think. Anyway, uh, it's like this fun little intro where it's like, that's the, that's the winter where I made the snowman. And it's like, and actually having that, kind of like because most of the time you just when they show it nowadays they just they just show it on telly i think without that intro but actually when you think about it it's like the guy sorry uh basically the story like i thought it was originally set in that time period of the 80s but actually it's set in the 50s when you look at it like you know Mm -hmm. you have the old like the old timey house and Mm -hmm. uh the telly and stuff like that you know so i never realized that until i watched it that it's actually set at the 50s i've i've noticed that actually through like the locations and the look of everything uh-huh it's not like your typical 80s household it's like a very classic look with the 50s and all that stuff so um, the cool thing about the music is actually composed by a composer known by Howard Blake. Um, Howard Blake. Oh yeah. He's well, he's done this for the special, but he's done other films, you know, and it's actually pretty cool to have this on his resume because he's done uh, selected. Let's see, he's done Flash Gordon from 1980, two years prior. Um, there's other films he's done too, but he's he's a great composer. And the music alone, just like you watch it for the music, and God, if, if there's yeah. a soundtrack, you could listen to it. Like you could just listen to it year round, you know, for, you know, yeah. for Christmas. And like I love this music. I would like actually turn it on just to listen in the background without even watching the special yeah. because it's so darn good. I love. See, I'm starting to get into like yeah. more film scores and like scores in general. This is amazing right. to listen to, and I just would love to give this a very high rating of like six because my god i just love the music so much yeah i mean oh god i was gonna say something now i can't remember what it was <laughs> like oh yeah how how Howard blake does sound very familiar i mean what other things did he do let me look at his full f- but uh <clears throat> Uh, let me look this up. Uh, hold on. Because well, I was the... thinking was he the guy that did like Red Dwarf and QI and stuff, but I'm thinking that's probably someone else. Uh, let's go through his filmography, folks. Uh, he's done seven episodes of The Avengers. Some will, some won't. An Elephant Calls Slowly, All the Way Up, The Rainbow Boys, uh, The Remarkable Rocket Short, The Duelist, The Odd Job, The Riddle of Sands, SOS Titanic... Snowman, The Lords of Dis- uh, Discipline, Animeville 3D, um, a, mo- a Month in the Country. He did a TV short in 89 called Grand Grandpa, A Midsummer's Night's Dream he did in 96. Uh-huh. Uh, he did, uh, oh, he did another short in 98 called The Bear. <laughs> That's oh, also I remember by- that. That's another one by Raymond Briggs and the Bear, which yeah. uh, actually that's another good show to talk about is the Bear. Um, 
I mean, he hasn't done much, actually, to be honest. I mean, oh, he actually did a live show of The Snowman in 2010. Oh, wow. My life so far. And so he's, he's done a few big, big name films. He's done a few shows and <laughs> some shorts. So, but yeah, really good uh, composer for sure, Howard Blake. He's still alive, so very good English composer. Uh huh. Now, here's the thing about the last one because it has no story structure, per se. No. Nah. Well done. There's a particular Howard I'm thinking of, but it's not Howard. I don't think it's Howard Blake. No, it's a different Howard you're thinking of. Actually, I wonder. Actually, I know. I know. I know Howard I know. Goodall. That was it. Howard Goodall. Who was actually uh, on an episode of QI. Oh, that guy. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, him, him. Here we go. <gasps> Do again? I don't even know. The composer who wrote QI, like the theme tune to QI and Black Adder and Red Dwarf and things like that. Not Howard Blake. Howard Goodall. Well, no, it was a Howard. So, yeah. Anyways, oh, right. the, la the last. Actually, we've got to ask the question Would you watch The Snowman again? I would always watch The Snowman again. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, maybe that could become like our Christmas tradition. Oh, that we can... Both, we can both sit down with snacks and drinks and uh, wear our Christmas jumpers or Christmas pajamas or something and snuggle up and watch the snowman and then we could like sit there and have a good cry together. And then we could also watch the, the snowman and the snow dog in the, for a double feature. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, we can just snuggle up and have a good cry together. <laughs> yeah. I so agree. yeah. Oddly enough, in this podcast, like I've done something cute, and you actually turned around and just pointed that out. Because most of the time when we did the royale, I do a cute thing. You just like you wouldn't say it, but I knew you just find it cute. Because it's you are so cute. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah, the love thing, like when we did that uh, girlfriend slash boyfriend tag, when I did the cute puppy how you were just like, oh my god, instead of, instead of like, you're so cute, but I think you just kind of found me cute anyway. Mm -hmm. You guys are cute, pie. I'm just adding filler in to kind of stretch this out a bit. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't have to be a full hour. It could be a short podcast. Yeah. I mean, this is our pilot episode, so it's not like it's going to be a super long thing. And it could be a short <laughs> podcast series, so it's just, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying things out. What other uh, shows of Britain or America we should compare together? Leave a comment below. <laughs> so anyway um the the final special from america is one that i imagine is very much a staple and i'm sure a lot of people in america would say it's not christmas until you've seen this special and this is the will vinton claymation christmas special and i have to say this is a very interesting special i like the format of this it's pretty much a carol service in a tv show and it's talking about all the you know pretty much like the favorite christmas carols and songs you've got christmas carols like uh we three kings um joy to the world rudolph the red-nosed reindeer uh oh christmas tree <coughs> and one that um they keep talking about throughout it i don't know what it is but there's a word wassail that they keep getting mistaken for waddle waffle etc 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 and then they think we wish you a merry christmas at the end as well so 
basically what I like about this is that it's you know it's a very simple format you know of just like a little Christmas concert bang 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 with all your acts but I like how not only did they have different like characters and whatever with the animation but they had different styles as well like I have to say I loved how they did um we Free Kings, because I have to say that's one of my favourite carols. Um, the kings just sung it in the normal way, and then the camels would cut in with the chorus and kind of do it like in a sort of jazz style. Do up, yeah. do up, of course. You can't beat a bit of do up, you know that sort of thing. So anyway, and then I have to say the animation for Joy to the World. Like I wasn't quite sure on the. St- style because they kind of I think they too much took too much artistic liberties with the lyrics and stuff but the animation style for that was absolutely brilliant how they did it because mm-hmm. I, I kind of thought like is that actually claymation are they using clay to animate that did they actually use clay in that mm. in that piece I would think so I mean I feel like I mean, that's yeah, I mean, if they did, then that's really clever because of, like, you know, it being so intricate and everything. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you have got the California Raisins doing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and in a very, like, it kind of best, their rendition of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer has kind of reminded me of, like, a mixture between Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons and the Drifters. Well, you're pretty close. It's actually a cover of the Temptations version of the song. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't I didn't know it was a cover. I thought it was their own sort of rendition, but there we are. Um Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. And um the two hosts that host actually I forgot to mention no Christmas tree. What I thought was really lovely is that it starts off with these kids decorating the tree. And each tree has like an ornament of a house so you go into the house and then you see another little christmas scene with a christmas tree that's got another little house ornament and you go into that ornament and i thought that was very 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 clever you know Mm -hmm. oh and also the other one i just remembered carol of the bells which was the second one and uh in notre dame with all these bells just whacking themselves in the head and there's a kind of a Quasimodo type composer that's being driven around the driven around the bend by this kind of goofy bell, <laughs> you know, doing things. And he's, he manages to, you know, get the there's like a fly that lands on his own and hits it. It's like Hammond's got a fly on it, and it's like trying to borrow it. It's like I lost mine. <laughs> So that was pretty funny and that was pretty clever. But the two hosts uh, are like two dinosaurs that host it. Uh, one of them um, has a voice that sounds, a kind of voice impersonation that sounds very familiar. This kind of set of voice that's like this, you know. Sort of sounds like a. A very smarmy Bob Dylan, you know. I mean, I, I'm probably not getting the most accurate of interpreta- uh, impersonations, but, you know, blocked up modes and everything. But I kind of felt like he he sounded like someone, like someone famous, and there was an impersonation. Not quite sure. He is voiced by Johnny Counterfeit. All right. And then there's um, the blue dinosaur who sounds like, once again, his voice sounded like it was some sort of familiar comedian or some sort, but like the blue dinosaur is just there for snacks and stuff. And, you know, that kind of thing. I, he is my spirit animal all the time. <coughs> you know, that sort of thing. And um, I have to say, so. We talked about the story, talked a bit about the characters, and well, the animation of this is just absolutely brilliant. 
you know, of course it's Will Vincent, so of course it's going to be fantastic. But I have to say, one of the highlights for me was the Joy to the World sequence where it was just so cleverly done. And if I mean, if that was clay that was used, the amount of hours that went into that must have been like well over 100 hours or so because mm-hmm. that that is just so in, uh, intricate you know but you know worthwhile and it's all paid off so i have to say it is very much you know i mean it, it's a good christmas special to put on the telly to watch but also just for background music as well mm-hmm. you know that sort of thing or just something to have on in the background while you open presents and whatever because you know the music of air is absolutely brilliant you know so so storyline i'm gonna give it a i'm gonna give it a six because i have to say out of the two specials that i watched i enjoyed this one a lot more i i like how it's a carol service or you know sort of Kind of variety show slash carol concert in animation form, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, ca- animation, 10 out of 10. It's Will Vinton. And, you know, it's just fantastic. And all the hard work that went into it, it's so smooth, so intricate, you know, and detailed. It's brilliant. So, definitely. 10 out of 10 for that. Characters, I'm going to give it, give them an 8. Because, I mean, there were some interesting characters in there. I mean, I have a feeling that the dinosaurs probably were from another Will Vinton project. But, you know, there were some really, really interesting characters in there. And, of course, you had the California Raisins and that sort of thing. And they were brilliant once again. So, would I watch this special again? Yes, I would, without a doubt. Ah, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it's interesting because we talked about our favorites, and neither of us wanted to watch either each other's favorites again, and yet the <laughs> other two specials we showed each other, we just love it, and we will watch it again. <laughs> Oh, wait, the Garfield one was your favourite? Yeah. I'm so sorry. God, I feel like a terrible friend. But I feel so terrible for not liking Naughty and Father Christmas. So it's just like, I mean. (laughs) Where's your Christmas spirit, guys? Oh, went out the window. Merry Christmas, people. It's like, here's my Christmas spirit. Ew. Uh, can I borrow yours? I lost mine. <laughs> I guess the I guess the comparisons actually, to be honest, is like besides that, it's just like we both chose specials of each of each other's uh, country that that has music featured in it the most. Yeah. Thinking about it, so I guess we both love our music and we love specials Ooh. that contain music. So yeah, uh, and I mean, Christmas is a great time for music as well. Oh yeah, Car- for sure. Carols, Christmas songs, hoping and praying that X Factor isn't going to be Christmas number one again. Yeah, so... <laughs> so yeah, we uh, highly recommend you guys checking out these specials if you want. Um, a majority of them are on YouTube, except for one, which you probably have to search really high and low for, which is the Will Benton's Claymation Christmas. Uh-huh. Uh, um, but other than that, uh, really high, just turn, turn, turn those on during, you know, Christmas week, you know, Christmas Eve, Christmas day, watch them, watch them with your family, your friends and just have a jolly good time, you know? Yeah. If you guys have got any suggestions for us, for, um, any particular programs you want us to review or feature in this podcast, or if you've got any themes ideas for podcasts pop them down in the comments section below and if you enjoyed this pilot episode give it a thumbs up 
and make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. I will do a podcast with her a lot more with the Between the Pawns because yeah. this was originally supposed to be a scripted review series, but we decided not to because it just felt too prolonged and <laughs> yes <laughs> and I'm, my forte is podcasting so it's easier for us to talk about it openly <laughs> instead of just like writing things out like a normal yeah, reviewer exactly. so. yeah so don't forget to go and subscribe to mike and click the little notification bell so you can keep up to date with what he's up to and also subscribe to her channel because she started doing vlogmas for a while but as she says she's she's got a cold she's feeling sick so please wish her to feel better in the comments down below because hopefully she feels better uh but yeah subscribe to her channel she's doing videos whenever she can and click the little notification bell as well on my channel so you can keep up to date uh, don't forget to follow our social media i'm sure we'll i'm sure mike will put them in the description box below uh-huh yeah yeah so from us to you we hope you have a wonderful christmas and a wonderful new year um we hope 2019 will bring you all the best things in the world and best wishes to you guys and hopefully we'll be back in the new year with more of the uh more of this podcast mm -hmm. indeed <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys across the pond. Nice dramatic. Adios, amigos.